If you feel like you're not improving fast enough, or you're frustrated because you practice all the time but don't seem to improve, this video is for you. In this video, I'll show you how to practice soccer by yourself and master the art of training on your own so you can improve faster than your teammates, constantly impress your coaches, and start to dominate your competition. If you don't know about me, I used to be a huge underachiever, but through obsessive self-improvement, I found my success. Earned a college scholarship, played for my national futsal team, a YouTube channel with over 100 million views. I've helped players worldwide, and I'd love to help you improve faster and achieve more. It can be frustrating to practice every day and never see any improvements. You feel like you're wasting your time, and you even ask, What's the point of all this practice? You put in the time and it drives you crazy because it seems like other players who aren't even practicing are performing better than you. For the longest time, this is what I did. I was basically the same player for five years. It wasn't until I changed my approach to training that I started seeing some great results. Now I can say I honestly feel like I'm a better player every time I step on the field and I can't stop improving. It's an amazing feeling and it's one I want you to have. Looking back, I was making some common mistakes that you may be making yourself. If you watch this entire video and you act on these ideas, you will have the tools to improve faster than your teammates, but more importantly, improve faster than you have in the past. Let's start with some of the most common questions about training on your own and then I'll move into some more advanced ideas to guarantee you're getting the results that you want. What tools do you need to get this job done? Well a big bag of balls will help, the more the better, some cones, maybe a speed ladder, your boots, some comfortable socks and don't forget your water. But at the end of the day all you really need is yourself and the desire to improve. The first part of your workout should be the warm up, and I want you to start taking your warm up more seriously. Obviously, the warm up is here to prepare yourself for physical activity, it's there to reduce the chance of injury, but this is also an incredible opportunity to improve your athleticism, to improve your mobility, your sharpness, your quickness of feet, to improve your flexibility and your strength. So while other players are taking their warm up for granted, you are getting the most out of these exercises. This is also a great opportunity for you to mentally prepare. Think about what you want to achieve in this session. A great warm up will produce a great workout. The next part of your individual practice should be physical training. Personally, I like to get the hard stuff done first so then you can get the ball at your feet. You want to think about constantly improving your fitness, becoming a physically dominant player, a better athlete. If you do that, the game will become easier to you. There are many different disciplines of fitness that you can practice as far as plyometrics, agility, change of direction, stamina, speed. Think about progressing a little bit in these areas every single day. If you need ideas for fitness drills, check out the video I just released called Soccer Conditioning Drills. I'll put a link in the description below. Next, you want to move into technical training. Now, this should be the biggest component of your individual practice. Obviously, you want to improve your fitness, but you want to develop football specific skills, soccer specific skills. And for that, you need the ball at your feet. So again, there are many different disciplines you can practice, fast footwork, dribbling, 1v1 skills, changes of direction with the ball, and obviously shooting and finishing. It's difficult to practice passing and first touch by yourself at the field, but I'll make a video in the future to show you how to do that with a wall or even at home. For me, shooting practice is the most important component of technical training. But while I'm shooting, I'm actually incorporating dribbling, ball control into the mix to make it more realistic. When it is finally time to slow down and hit a dead ball, don't just hit balls. Really focus 
and treat each shot like it's the 90th minute and you only have one opportunity. If you like this content, check out the Soccer Success Planner. You can download it for free. There's a link in the description below. And for advanced training, check out the online soccer opportunity. You want to train consistently. That's how you get results. But you can't do that if you're sore all the time. So put a priority on your cool down. It doesn't have to be long, but take a little bit of time to relieve the tension in your body. You can do some light shaking out, even some light movement like light jogging or walking helps, but some static stretching, trying to focus on your tight areas so you feel better, like you could almost play another game right away. That's the mentality I have and that's the one I want you to have when you're cooling down. There is so much power in consistency. There is so much power in momentum. It's more valuable. You will improve faster if you do a little bit every day as opposed to doing a lot one day and then taking a rest and doing a lot in a few more days. You want to train every single day. Now you have to learn to listen to your body. And if you're doing a three hour marathon session, burning yourself out, you're not gonna be able to train every day. So you wanna be efficient with your training. You wanna be consistent with your training. That's how you build repetition. So your training session should be focused, it should be intense, but it shouldn't be too long. And it shouldn't leave you dead, sore, and unable to train the next day. You wanna challenge yourself, you wanna push your limits a little bit, but you want to be able to recover so you can come back tomorrow and keep that momentum going. Personally, I train every day. Now, is every training session the same? No. Does every training session have the same intensity? No. I listen to my body. I have to see what my body's telling me. If I'm tired, a little fatigued, a little sore, I might take it easier that day. If I'm feeling fresh, I'll push my limits. If I have a team session or a game later that night, I'll just go really light. If it's off season and I have nothing on the menu, then we can go a little bit harder. So I like to train every day, but yes, you have to vary your intensity, your duration, but you want to be consistent. Now I'd like to explain some positive training habits you can use to get more out of your session. So number one is making your training match realistic. What do most players do? They juggle the ball, do some freestyle tricks, hit some free kicks, walk around, and call that a session, think they're improving. What you want to do is make your training realistic. So the way you move with the ball, you have to replicate game situations. That means your quality, your speed, your focus, and your intensity. Do the things you do not want to do. So what do you find yourself shying away from? The things that mentally you don't want to do. Everyone wants to play with the ball, but no one really wants to put in the hard work. The things that scare you are the things that you need to do. The things that you're not good at are the things that you need to do. The things that make you uncomfortable are the things you want to do. So usually for people, it's fitness. Run towards those things instead of running away from them. It will make you a better player. This is just a simple example of someone shooting and how they respond after the shot. All your balls are gone, what do you do? You walk to the ball, you waste your time. Instead, you wanna look for opportunities to gain fitness, to challenge yourself, to push yourself. So instead of walking for the ball, run for the ball. Remember, the game doesn't stop when you get tired. So even if you're tired, you need to learn to keep going. Recently, I've become fascinated with breathing and it's making a massive impact on my stamina. What you wanna think about is learning to control your breath. So instead of panting and just letting your lungs fill up with air, huffing and puffing, think about trying to calm your breath down, breathing through your nose, focusing on recovery, calming your breath, calming your heart, so you can recover faster and perform better. When most players make a mistake in training, let's say for an example, a bad shot with your weaker foot, they'll quickly go back to what they're good at, shooting with their stronger foot. What you wanna do is slow down, analyze what you did wrong, and try to fix it. So that means getting more repetitions, but also think about what you need to change about your technique and practicing it until you get the result that you want. The more you focus, the more you practice, the better it will become. If you like this content, check out the Soccer Success Planner. You can download it for free. There's a link in the description below. And for advanced training, check out the online Soccer Academy.